Yeah. Okay, should I go ahead? Just a minute. Okay. Yes, please start early. Okay, coming on live from our Techno Show headquarters, this is your host, Areej. Today we have with us two leading ladies from, from, uh, from Pakistani Women in Computing, PWIC, Muazma Zaheed and Farah Tahir Khuram. Muazma Zaheed is a techno technology leader in cloud computing data and AI, currently working at, at Microsoft. She has been in the tech industry for over 13 years and passionate about mentoring and helping the next generation. Farah Tahir Khuram is a software developer at Microsoft. She also serves on the board of nonprofit Pakistani Women in Computing. She has been an advocate of education of for all and has received multiple awards for her advocacy work for education in Washington State. So I have a few questions for you as this is an interview. So uh, this is a question for both of you. Can you please share with us a little bit uh, of your background? We can start with uh, Moazma first. Sure, thank you, Reach, for inviting me for this uh, session. Mm -hmm. I am really happy to be here and sharing my background and advice for our next generation here who's listening to this talk. Uh, as I was introduced, my name is Mazama Zahid. I am currently uh, engineering leader at Microsoft in the Microsoft Cloud Division, uh, which is called Microsoft Azure. I have been in the tech industry for over 13 years, almost coming to 14 years, which is a really long time, uh, originally from Pakistan. Um, my background has been, uh, most of my work has been in the data space. So my first job out of college, which was in Teradata Pakistan, was in the data warehousing. I moved to big data and then cloud computing for the last few years. And then in the data space, it's mostly about machine learning and AI. How do you deploy those models at scale? How do you actually make sense of the data that we are all producing all the time? And um, that is uh, pretty much my uh, work experience. Outside of work, I volunteer at several organizations. I give time back to a lot of nonprofits, such as Pakistani Women in Computing. I'm the current president of that. And then um, other than that, a lot of diversity, equity, and inclusion places like Anita VR, Give Women Who Code Cloud, and some, some others. Um, so yeah, really happy to be here and would be uh, sharing a lot of uh, great uh, advice based on my experience in this session. Okay, thank you. What about you, Farah? Can you know a little bit about your ba background? Hi, Arif, thank you so much for inviting us uh, over here. And I'm super excited to be here and um, um, give any advice to the younger generation. Um, and awesome background, Mazma. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, for me, I'm Farah, as you've um, mentioned, as Arish has mentioned before. Um, my name is Farah. I work as a software developer um, at Microsoft. I'm also in cloud computing, uh, uh, so the cloud space in Microsoft at Azure. That's where I work. Um, I have been with Microsoft for almost three years now. Um, before that, I was um, a stay-at-home mom, and um, I have two uh, boys, very active boys, who I was taking care of in um, almost a decade after uh, staying at home, I joined Microsoft. During the time I was taking care of the kids, I was also a huge advocate of education. So I've been working in um, local um, education nonprofits for almost a decade, uh, a little over a decade. And I've, uh, I've always uh, been an advocate of STEM education for younger generation. And I've worked on a couple of initiatives over here in Washington state for that. Um, I've initiated some STEM education programs and competitions um, for our school district within Washington state and uh, um, a lot of other similar activities I've done in the past. So um, um, for those I've earned, uh, I've, I've received multiple uh, awards from Washington state and our school district and school um, uh, for, for all the efforts that I've done over there. 
Um, I'm also very passionate about uh, DNI, so diversity and inclusion. I work for that within Microsoft and also outside Microsoft. So outside Microsoft, I've also uh, also serve on pa Pakistani women in computing. I'm on the board of that. Um, I also uh, promote Pakistanis and uh, within Microsoft and outside. So I've, I'm involved with those uh, initiatives as well. Super happy to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming here. So uh, this uh, question again is for both of you. What motivates you and what are your ideals? You can, uh, uh, Farah, you can start with answering that. What motivates you and what are your ideals? Um, yeah, so my motivation and ideals would be like um, everyone should have the opportunity to reach their full potential. It could be education related, or it could be like um, whichever, whatever thing you're passionate about, you should be able to have an opportunity to at least explore that and reach your potential within that. So that's what has always been behind whatever I've done, uh, like uh, with education on advocacy for younger kids, like they're not able to um, reach their full potential if they don't have those opportunities. So creating those opportunities for them. Same for uh, my work with Pakistani women in computing. So DNI efforts that um, I help with, those, um, like, basically, my idea is to create opportunities for people who might not find it easily to help them reach their potential. Okay. Uh, Mazuma, we'll move to you. What are you? Yeah, on? thank you for the question. Um, I, I, my answer is almost like uh, echo of what Farah is saying: uh, creating mm -hmm. opportunities, providing. Uh, the resources to the folks that don't have the same access. So when I was graduating back in 2006, I, there were really few role models out there that I could look up to, especially for women in tech. And it was really hard to find my belonging in the industry and finding like my way through this. Um, there was no uh, online groups. Uh, Facebook was itself really new. So there was no much social media platforms or any other platforms to actually go and connect them. So uh, connect with them and uh, get some help and mentoring and allyship and sponsorship when you need that in your career. Um, so my, my, um, my goal is to actually do that, provide that to our next generation and, and, and of course, like pass on the baton and make sure that they do the same and uh, the thing that motivates me uh, the most is um, is the energy that I see right so when I when I look at my daughters I have three daughters uh, when I look at them um, the way they perceive different problems the way they look at these different issues and how they solve it it really uh, motivates me to see that there's a brighter future and they have opportunities in front of them. So it's just the energy that I get with when I talk to this, um, the, the next generation or the folks that are now graduating, for example. That's very inspiring. Thank you to both of you. This question is for Moazama. What is STEM education and why do you think it is important for this generation? Yeah, uh, thank you for the question. So STEM, I think most of you already know about it, but STEM is science, technology. Um, what does the E stands for? I just totally forgot. Uh, engineering, engineering and mathematics, right? Mm -hmm. So um, so all of these, uh, so I think a lot of people when they are in middle school or high school, for example, they, uh, they think that it's super complicated, it's really hard to get in, or you really don't know what is your next step to get into this, right? Um, it's, I think today, the way these things are, any of the field, if you have any passion regarding solving problems, if you are curious to know when you can go something and do something, build something, this is the field for you. So um, you can start with solving a simple puzzle and then maybe go to, if you're good in creatives, you can go into designing of those things. Mm -hmm. If you are good in solving like problems, uh, you can go into coding and then you can actually code whatever you want to code, right? Uh, so there's a lot of potential in this field. Uh, you can start if you're good in math, for example, there are a lot of um, people who are really good in math. Uh, my father is a mathematics professor. So for me, it was very natural uh, in my home to go in this field. And to, uh, to be honest with you, the reason I chose this over, uh, let's say being a doctor was that I didn't want to do any frog dissections in my <laughs> second year uh, of education, right? So yeah. I just wanted to run away from that. And then this was the uh, other option that I go with that. So um, it, it, it depends on what motivates you, what is your passion, what you are good at. So look at the, your strengths 
and then go from there. Um, and right now with uh, competitions like these um, resources, there are a lot of places where you can get started on and uh, there's a lot to kind of start your search on this journey. Okay, thank you for your answer. So this question is for Farah. What are the skills that STEM teaches? Is there a future in the future? Um, thank you for the question. Yeah, I, I think um, uh, whatever Moazma was saying, I can echo that for STEM-based uh, skills. Um, what you, the skills that you need or STEM teaches you is how to do, do critical thinking or how to learn problem solving. These are the basic skills that are needed to thrive in STEM or even probably in any any of the field that you're going to join. So any futuristic field, any futuristic jobs that you can think of will need these skills. Um, and going into STEM right now at, a, at an early stage as well, it's going to start teaching you the way of think, like it's a new way of thinking or a different way of thinking than we we as kids knew, right? So that kind of helps you um, get better at the, um, you know, thinking outside of the box or thinking about it, how to do problem solving or how to solve differently than regular in our whatever we are taught in our regular education. Uh, so uh, these skills are pretty much what is going to be the basis of the future. Right. Okay. So if you are getting yourself um, early on into uh, this way of thinking and excelling at that, that is probably going to be helpful in the future not just in STEM based fields, it's uh, probably going to be the, uh, the skills that are needed for each and every skill uh, profession that you choose. It might not be STEM based, it might be medicine, or it might be you're a lawyer or an accountant or any other field, you're starting your own business. These are the skills that you need to thrive. So. Okay, okay. thank you. Uh, this uh, question is for Farah. Uh, do you think education will take a backseat in an age of internet and technology? Um, it's a, the answer could be yes and no. Um, it tr truly depends on how you define education. What is education to you? Does it mean education means that uh, you are going to get um, higher level degrees from universities? Yeah. The answer could be no, that you because you will you you are able to get a lot of skills uh, from a lot of different resources that are available throughout the internet, and it's easily accessible. You can easily take courses from um, bigger universities without actually enrolling in those courses. Mm -hmm. But if you define education as learning. It's a learning opportunity. It, it, it becomes like it's an evolution of education in itself, right? You are learning differently. You can have those online courses. You can have look at the, those different videos. You can develop those skills without going to university, but that's also education. So to me, education is evolving and it is growing in itself, but it's not gonna take a backstage. Okay. Uh, and this question from Wazma. Uh, how can kids benefit through learning coding in early years? Yeah, I think uh, it depends on, as I said, like it, come, it, it should come from you if you're interested in that or not. But definitely, I would say give it a try, right? So the joy of writing your first code and when something returns on the screen may be a Hello World program or something like that. Uh, that is uh, that is a great joy that you build it right you you build something and then you can see the result right away and your code can make some certain action so um, these days I know there are a lot of these kits that are available that you can directly program and they are like kind of robotics or learning something and you can see something move right a lot of stem based toys are available for kids of all ages that you can introduce your kids to them early on and they can start learning the basics of coding so coding is nothing but giving instructions to a machine and telling the machine to do something right, right. the future is as i mentioned um, in my intro like i work in this field is machine learning and ai a lot of machines and uh, technology is actually getting advanced and that's getting intelligent by the day. So these are the skills of the future. If you don't learn them today, even if you are, as Farah was saying, not in the technical field, you might be interacting with them being a doctor, being a okay. um, lawyer, being uh, being anyone, right? So just to get familiar with it, that's a great thing. And I think every kid should have an opportunity to 
at least explore this and see if they're interested in it or not. And mm -hmm. even if you don't end up being a software engineer or, or uh, being in the technology field, you can still interact with it and learn from it and, uh, and, and be better at it in future. So highly encourage that. Uh, you should all check that out. Uh, okay, so this question is for both of you. So the idea behind Techno Show is to promote uh, the importance of uh, uh, in the young generation. What would you like to say about our virtual event being held on the 16th of January? I I can I can give uh, some feedback on that. I think uh, the it's it's a really great way of encouraging uh, kids and middle school, high school, different uh, age group folks to look at uh, learning this early on and then uh, coming up with an idea, building the code for it or building some kind of technology for it, and then and then really seeing the results. And uh, that's that's awesome, right? So uh, that that is a great opportunity, and mm -hmm. I think the the event that you're organizing is a great event for the kids to come in, learn uh, something new, um, learn from some of these mentors and other talks that you are organizing as well, mm -hmm. and learn what is there in this field, right? And see if this sparks an interest for them, and is there a future for them in this field or not? Right. Okay. Uh, Farah, would you like to add something to that? Yes, I want to echo what Rosma said. So it's a great initiative. It is really important for children to getting themselves involved in system, at least give it a try, understand a little bit of basics and then see if that's the future for you or not. Mm -hmm. uh, these skills are necessarily needed going forward. So getting exposure to them is really important. And the way you guys are uh, creating an, 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 a platform for the student, the children to go and explore and then highlight whatever they've accomplished and um, trying to present themselves as uh, their, the creation that they've built. It's a, it, it, um, for children, it's a very proud moment to you know, display of whatever they've achieved. And uh, it's, it's really good for them to come out, go out there, talk to industry leaders, and then get, get their feedback on it and get some mentorship early on. So it's a really, really great initiative. Thank you, and thank you so much for putting it together. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, and this is the last question. This is again for both of you. What do you have to say to children out there who dream big? Uh, Farah, you can say, you can start. Sure. Um, yes. So uh, I'll, I'll start with giving an example. Like um, I was, uh, when I was a, um, a small young girl um, in like uh, starting out middle school, um, I was introduced to computer science. Um, so one of the courses in my school was computer science and we, we started coding at that early age. Um, it was an inspirational moment to, you know, like Mama said, look at the hello world. Like it just pops up, you've done something, like you made the computer do something. That was a really, really sparking moment for me. And then that's when, that's when I decided, okay, I was I was coding on uh, GW Basic from Microsoft. And then that's like how I made the connection with Microsoft. And I really wanted to be the person that, you know, I want to write uh, or create uh, different platforms for other children to go in and experience what I just experienced. And that was my dream as a young 12 year old living in Pakistan, that was a unachievable dream, right? It was a big dream for me to even imagine that I will be in the US, I will be working for Microsoft. But um, in the path to it might not be very simple or a very straightforward path. It can take a lot of turns and curves, but eventually you will get there if you keep working at it. So my advice to the younger generation would be keep dreaming big, be resilient about it, keep working at it. You will, sometimes you might feel that you're not going in the direction of that dream, but if, eventually if you keep trying and you keep having your mental strength focused towards that dream, you will achieve it. So keep doing whatever you're doing and keep dreaming big. Thank you for your answer. It's really inspiring. And Wasma, would, what would you say to the kids out there who would dream big? Thank you for all for that. Um, I read this actually yesterday. It showed up in one of my feeds that a dream without action is only a wish. 
So uh, I, the first thing is definitely dream and dream big. Uh, dream for the things that you really, uh, that really make you, uh, make that spark in your head. And as Farah was mentioning, mm-hmm. her journey over there. Uh, but take actions, right? I, I, I very thoroughly believe in hard work. I believe in really being consistent and learning uh, and have that growth mindset. So when you have certain uh, goals in, and so certain aims or certain dreams, keep learning and keep taking those baby steps towards that. And, and, and in that journey, as what I was also saying, you'll have several setbacks. You'll have several things that will not go the way that you thought. Um, so don't get discouraged at those times. Uh, reach out to the folks, your friends, your family, your mentors at that time to give you the support. And, um, and you, will, you will do it. You will go through this and you will achieve. You, your path might change. Your dream might change. You might end up somewhere else. But keep keep doing and keep taking those uh, consistent steps towards uh, your goal, your dream, and and the future is really bright. I'm really uh, really um, excited uh, because I believe most of like our younger generation, they are curious folks. They want to learn. They are more aware. Uh, mm-hmm. They have a lot to kind of contribute back to uh, back to the world. And uh, I wish all of you uh, kind of best luck, best of luck for that and, uh, mm-hmm. and, and, and do what you do best and, and keep working on it. Thank you so much for, uh, to both of you for taking time to answer these questions. Thank you, Wazma Zahir and uh, Farah Tahir Faram. You both are uh, inspirational Pakistani women would encourage kids and girls alike to get education and further in life. Thank you so much for answering our questions and uh, being here and taking the time. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much for arranging it and for inviting us over. Um, It was a pleasure talking to you both and uh, very inspirational talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Thank you for inviting and hope to be in touch in the future and looking forward to see what the what what these uh, kids actually make. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.